Um, now we're going to look at what happens when um, gases combine in a chemical reaction. And we're going to start tying in the mole concept along with what we know about gases. And we're also going to tie in uh, what we call stoichiometry, which comes from balanced equations that describe chemical reactions. Now, the first thing that we want to be able to deal with is recognize that in order for molecules to react together, they have to be in the same place at the same time and they have to bump into each other. If we're going to have gasoline in a car's engine here, there's the gasoline goes into the cylinder with a fuel injector, or carburetor, whatever you know kind of car you have, it, it puts the gasoline into the cylinder, but also it mixes it with air and air has oxygen. And the oxygen mixes with the gasoline. And because they're gases, there's space between all the molecules. And gases are, are the most efficient way for chemical reactions to happen. Solids don't react very well. Okay, Gases do react very well because gases, the, the molecules, can circulate around each other. And every molecule of oxygen can surround itself with gasoline. And every molecule of gasoline can surround itself with oxygen till they're mixed together in a homogeneous mixture and then they can collide with each other and when they collide with each other then they have a chance to react of course it takes some energy to get them started which is why your car has a spark plug but once it starts then the reaction can progress so the collision theory idea is a pretty important part of it and molecules can collide with each other more freely if they're spread out and able to move now here's a classic example, and early on in the uh, this sort of sequester period, the, one of the first things I made was a video that I'm going to show you again in a minute that involves um, a Bunsen burner. And a Bunsen burner has a little hose where gas comes in, natural gas, which is ethane and methane, and they mix with air, and if you look at this picture of a Bunsen burner, you see down at the base there are a series of holes, there's three holes that you can see that air comes in, and so the gas and the air mix going up the tube, and you ignite them at the top of the tube, and then they're able to burn together, right? So we can, uh, when they do that, they do that in a particular proportion. We're going to watch this video, which I made, and enjoy it. A Bunsen burner because it's burning and what I have is a combustion reaction and the combustion reactions are of course burning and burning involves a fuel and it involves oxygen and the fuel in this case is natural gas and natural gas as it pipes in through the pipes to your stove or to the uh, to the furnace or to the gas jets here is a combination of methane and ethane the A-N-E ending tells you that it is a hydrocarbon, which we'll address again in a minute. Now, the way the Bunsen burner is built is it has a hose with, with the natural gas coming in, and there's a barrel at the bottom that uh, I can rotate, and by rotating it, I allow either more or less air in. I just allowed more air in, and the uh, combustion became more vigorous. If I cut off the air, the uh, combustion becomes less vigorous, the rate of combustion becomes less. Um, and so when we have a combustion reaction, what combustion is, is burning. And burning always involves some fuel that burns, but in order to burn, burning requires oxygen. And uh, chemically then, what's going to happen is the different elements that are part of the fuel are gonna become oxidized and we'll uh, address that in a little more detail up on the board. Print this off and lights. And now we have up here what would normally be in your notes. Combustion reaction is burning. Of course, every chemical reaction has reactants and products. And in a combustion reaction, the reactants are always some kind of a fuel, which is usually carbon-based, and oxygen. And then since the carbon-based fuel combines with oxygen, you always get carbon dioxide if you have complete combustion. 
I suppose you can get carbon monoxide as well, but generally speaking, it's going to be carbon dioxide. And the hydrogen in the fuel combines the oxygen and forms water, which is H2O. And we're going to address three different kinds of fuel, hydrocarbons, which we showed with the Bunsen burner, and methane and ethane are found in natural gas. You're familiar with the canned gas, the LP gas called propane, or butane, which you might find in a, in a disposable cigarette lighter, and of course octane, which is gasoline. Those are all hydrocarbons. So we're going to address how to balance equations with hydrocarbons, and we just demoed a, a reaction of a combustion with hydrocarbons, and we'll follow up with a separate issue uh, of alcohols and carbohydrates. So when we look over here in the combustion reaction, if we had the combustion of methane, as we did in the burner, methane's formula is CH4. To burn it, you require oxygen. And the carbon will combine with oxygen to form carbon dioxide, and the hydrogen will combine with oxygen to form water. And when we balance the equation, the combustion, the balancing the combustion reactions are pretty much driven by the fuel that you're using, because generally speaking, the fuel is going to dictate how much burning you get. There's plenty of oxygen in the atmosphere. So we'll look at it that way. We're going to take our, our equation. Again, when we balance, we assign coefficients. I'm going to assign a coefficient of 1 for the fuel, because the amount of fuel is going to determine how much oxygen you need to burn it and how much waste product you're going to get. And if one carbon burns, that will allow you to produce one carbon dioxide. And if one of these fuel burns, that's four hydrogens, and four hydrogens is enough to make two molecules of water, so we assign a coefficient of two. Now, the thing that we had to do here is oxygen on this side is going to account for all of the oxygen in both the carbon dioxide and the water. So the oxygen in a combustion reaction is the last thing we want to attempt to balance. So what we have to do is we have to take all the oxygen on the product side and then go back and balance it against the oxygen on the reactant side. So what I have here is two oxygens, one times two is two, plus two more oxygens, of course two plus two is four, so I must have to balance the equation four oxygens on that side, so I assign a coefficient of two, two times two equals four, and there it is balanced. So that would be balancing the equation for the combustion of methane. To follow that up, let's do the balanced equation for the combustion of ethane, which is also part of natural gas. Again, the fuel drives the equation. So I assign a one. Now you see that I have two hydrogens and six oxygens, excuse me, two carbons and six hydrogens. So to balance the two carbons, I assign a coefficient of two. To balance the hydrogens, I have to account for six hydrogens, and two goes into six three times. And now I have to balance the oxygen against all of the oxygen in both of the products. The problem with this is I have four plus three is seven, and two does not go into seven. So when I run into that problem, as I very often do, I don't try and do it algebraically. I tried it with a coefficient of one. It didn't work. I'm going to try it with a coefficient of two. Now I balance the carbon. Two times two is four. Two times six hydrogen is 12. And two goes into 12 six times. And now that I have that, I have eight oxygen, four times two, plus six more. Eight plus six is 14, and two goes into 14 seven times. So now I have my equation balanced. That was um, a little bit longer than it needed to be, but we're um, focusing there on balancing the equation because in the balanced equation, we're going to be able to relate proportions of the substances. Now again, remember, we're doing this with gases. The same concept is going to work with things other than gases, but gases react very quickly and very easily because 
the molecules can circulate, mix together very easily, and then that allows the molecules of the different reactants to collide with each other. So I've got here the, a, a frame taken out of there with the methane equation um, balanced. And the, the coefficients describe the proportions. And when we uh, look at this, you see, as it says here in the, the note, that for every one molecule of methane, you're going to have two molecules of oxygen. Well, if we scale that up using the mole concept, for every one mole of methane, methane is CH4 again, for every one mole of methane, we're going to have two moles of oxygen react with it. And also, for every one mole of methane, you're going to produce one mole of carbon dioxide, and you're going to produce two moles of water. But down in the bottom left frame here, you see that we can make this into a molar ratio of one mole of methane to two moles of oxygen. Or, flip it upside down, two moles of oxygen to every one mole of methane. Um, why might we flip it upside down? Well, that's going to come to the next thing that we're going to do, which is to... Uh, relate real proportions of real substances, not just imaginary. Um, and that'll be in the next frame, but you want to recognize here that the number of moles of oxygen, as you see in purple underneath the picture, will always be double the number of moles of, of methane. So technically, if I had two moles of methane, then I'd have four moles of oxygen. If I had three moles of methane, I'd have six moles of oxygen because the number of moles of oxygen is always going to have to be double the moles of methane okay and the number of moles of co2 as it says will always be equal to the number of moles of methane because for every one methane you're going to get one carbon dioxide once it's balanced it has to be that way and that allows us to do what we call stoichiometry and stoichiometry is using these coefficients and molar ratios to uh, determine amounts of substance in a chemical reaction by using the molar ratio. Okay, so we already looked at the molar ratios, and here I have the coefficients color-coded, so each one has a different color to help you identify where the numbers are coming from. And I've got a made-up number here. Let's say we had 2.5 moles of methane, okay, measured out. Okay, and, and later we'll, the next step will be, how do I know it's 2.5 moles of methane? Well, we're going to convert, we're going to measure it by liters and perhaps measure the temperature and the pressure if it's not at STP. And we're going to, uh, to convert, but right now we're going to focus on just the moles. If I have 2.5 moles of methane, well, in the reaction, everything else in the reaction is going to either be reacted or be produced in pr the proportion that the balanced equation shows. So we can easily calculate from that how many moles of oxygen it would take to react and how many moles of carbon dioxide would be produced and how many moles of water would be produced. And on the right hand side, I've got three calculations. All three of them start with the data that was given 2.5 moles of methane. All three of them are using a dimensional analysis method where the conversion factor is the molar ratio, where we're canceling out moles of methane to get, in the first case, moles of oxygen. And the moles of oxygen to moles of methane is a 2 to 1 ratio because the coefficients are 2 to 1. And what do we do? We multiply by the top and divide by the bottom. 2.5 times 2 is 5.0. So if I reacted 2.5 moles of methane, I would expect to also react 5.0 moles of oxygen. Double, like we said in the previous frame. How about the second substance that we're concerned about, the carbon dioxide that's produced by the reaction? Well, logically, they both have the same coefficient, one mole of methane, one mole of CO2. If I set my dimensional analysis up to cancel the moles of methane, to find out about moles of carbon dioxide, it turns out that the numbers are a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, the numbers in the molar ratio are the coefficients as I've color-coded. Well, 2.5 times one divided by one is 2.5, big surprise. Okay, for every one mole of methane, I'm gonna get one mole of carbon dioxide. 
Okay, for every 2.5 moles of methane, I'm going to get 2.5 moles of carbon dioxide. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And finally, the water that's produced, the water vapor that's produced, is a two-to-one ratio. I'm canceling out methane to get water, because that's what the question asked me to do. How many moles of each product? One of the products is water. 2.5 times a two-to-one molar ratio of water to methane. 2.5 times 2 is 5.0. Okay, so the data given is multiplied by the molar ratio to convert from the original measured substance to determine the quantity of other substances in the reaction. And now we have a second problem or second set of problems with the combustion of ethane, which was the second equation that was demonstrated in the video. On the left-hand side, you see the balanced equation, which we demonstrated how to balance it in, in the video. And, and we've got some sample data again. And the sample data, let's say we got five moles of ethane burning completely in the presence of oxygen. Well, the amount of oxygen that would react with it would be in proportion, according to the coefficients. The amount of the products produced would be in proportion. The same proportion is described in the coefficients in the balanced equation. And the way we would work those proportions in the calculation is by using a molar ratio. It's dimensional analysis, so you take your data, you multiply by a ratio, bottom before top, units before numbers. Okay, we're canceling out the ethane to find out about the other substances in the reaction, first the oxygen, then the CO2, then the water vapor. And like I said, bottom before top, units before numbers. The units are moles. That's why it's a molar ratio. And the numbers that we put into the molar ratio are the coefficients from the balanced equation. Please pause the video. Work these out. It's simple math. They're already set up for you. Okay, and we'll check the answers in a moment. And here's the answers. When you do the math of course you multiply by the number on the top of the ratio and divide by the number on the bottom five times in the top one for the oxygen five times seven is 35 but then divided by two is 17 and a half okay the amount of oxygen that reacts with the ethane it reacts in a seven to two ratio okay so it's multiplied by seven and then divided by two. In the case of the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide reacts in a four to two molar ratio, four to two with ethane. So we would multiply by four and divide by two. Now, actually we probably wouldn't because most of us would look at four over two and know that that reduces down to two to one and five times two is 10. You probably didn't need a calculator to do that if you recognize that. And then finally, you have for the water vapor, the water vapor reacts in a 6 to 2 ratio. And 5 times 6 divided by 2 is 15. And of course, you probably recognize that 6 over 2 is reducible, but we don't reduce it in the molar ratio, reduce it in our head or in our calculator when we're doing the calculation. So these are molar ratio problems. And they're very straightforward. They describe the proportions of substances involved in a chemical reaction. And the numbers are the coefficients in the balanced equation.